Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Beverly Council on Aging and Senior Community Center. I see some new faces here today, as well as some familiar faces. I want to introduce Mayor Cahill and thank him for um, volunteering to have a community meeting right here at the Senior Center. It's certainly convenient for all of us. And you get the, the skill of my assistant director, Jessica, here um, with the PowerPoint slides. So thank you, Jessica. Um, but welcome, it's a beautiful day and I just want to welcome you and I hope you'll learn a lot today and save your questions because I'm sure there's a lot of experts in the room that can answer those questions for you. So welcome Mayor Cahill and thanks for being here. Thank you Marianne. Good morning everybody. In case you're not sure of, of what's happening this morning, we have a bunch of us who are going to speak. I'm going to uh, just update you a bit on the middle school project, and we're going to hear about some um, infrastructure road work that's going on, uh, maybe give you a, a, some tips on where to go and where not to go um, as you get around town. And then we're hearing from each of the community service department heads. <clears throat> Those are, uh, let me go down the list, recreation, uh, public health, veteran services, library, and council on aging. <clears throat> and after that, we have a whole lot of, of other city department heads here, and after we're done speaking, We'll all be available to just visit with you and answer any questions, uh, take any ideas or suggestions. The best part is I didn't get from the front door to the top of the stairs without getting about five suggestions on how to do things better. So, so thank, thank you for those. Um, if we could, yeah, let's get rid of that slide, please. Uh, so we're building a new middle school, and, and I think you all know, you've seen it. It's, it's on the site of the former Memorial Junior High, then Memorial Middle School. Uh, I just want to give you a few details. This is a school <coughs> excuse me, that's being built to put all of our fifth through eighth graders in. It will be, um, it's, it's a decision was made several years ago because we've had some real overcrowding at the elementary schools and at the same time, Briscoe's almost 100 years old and as much as we all love it, it just isn't getting the job done anymore. Um, the systems in there are, are all kind of shot and can't really be fixed up very easily. Uh, so the decision was made to build the new school and to put the fifth graders in there. It wasn't a quick decision because we took a lot of time researching and making sure that fifth graders could do well alongside sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. And the good thing we found out is that any kind of configuration of grades, whether it's K through eight or five, six or five, eight or six, seven, eight, they all work if you do them right. If you have a strong educational program and you staff them properly, and so the five through eight is actually a middle school model that's used in Swampscott, Linfield, and Wakefield, along with a whole bunch of other districts around the state. And we found that, um, that again, done right, this is going to be an incredible academic experience for our middle school kids. People kind of don't want their sixth graders around eighth graders. And so they didn't want their fifth graders around eighth graders. So now we're going to have the fifth and sixth graders in one academy within the school in the seventh and eighth and then another. Of course, once you have an eighth grader, you realize they're people too. So really, to, to have the fifth through eighth graders in one building, we think is going to be fantastic. Um, so the school will house 1,400 students. In grades five and six, they'll be organized into two teacher teams. So one teacher might teach math and science, the other might teach English and social studies. Uh, in the seventh and eighth grade, they'll be in the four teacher teams that the kids are used to seeing today at Briscoe. Um, each grade will have three teams. That's a nice slide. Let's go back to the other one. That, that just shows some of the construction, although we're much further along, along by now. Um, each grade level will have three teams. And you can see over to the right at the top, that's Cabot Street. You walk through the front door, and to the right as you walk in will be the main offices, and to the left will be the library media center. That's going to be two stories high. Then as you continue to walk into the building, it becomes four stories high, and to the top of the slide are the academic wings, one, two, three. So each grade level will have three wings. So the fifth graders, for example, will all be on the first floor, side by side by side. Sixth graders on the second floor, and so on up. Across from the academic wings, you can see, and let me just point this out a little more closely, right here, the cafeterias are going to run the length of this. There'll be a cafeteria for fifth and sixth graders that's two stories high. And on top of that, a cafeteria for seventh and eighth graders, also two stories high. Most of this will be glass. 
and you'll be able to look right out on the outdoor learning area that has an amphitheater right here for classes to be taught outdoors, and then across here to the athletic fields. When you, uh, as you continue down the hallway past the academic wings, to the bottom of the, sorry Marianne, to the bottom of the picture will be the auditorium over here and two gymnasiums over here. So the school will have two full-size basketball courts and a life fitness room uh, to be part of the phys ed and health curricula. And across the hall from that will be the auditorium, a 750-seat auditorium, which will be calculated so that they could put half the school in it at a time. If they're, you know, you take a fifth and sixth grade assembly or a seventh and eighth grade. Um, so that's just a quick look around the building. There will be, in addition to all the academic classrooms uh, that you'd think of, there will also be two large art rooms and two large technology rooms, each two stories high. So those four rooms will serve all of the kids. As well as that, in each wing, so for each what we're calling neighborhood of, of, of fifth graders or sixth graders, there will be a maker space. That's the, the term for a large room to do project work, multidisciplinary project-based kind of work. Because too often now, the kids get started on a project and there's nowhere to store it. There's nowhere to keep it intact if, it's t if it takes longer than one class period to work on it. So there'll be a lot of opportunity for that type of project-based work with these maker spaces. On the outside of the building, you see the athletic fields. You may have read that we made a decision recently to make one of them an artificial turf field. Has anybody heard of that? So there was some talk about that and whether we should do it or not. It costs more, but you get three times as many hours of use in an average year. There's a study done of New England weather and the use of athletic fields, and we, we absolutely need, and I gotta tell you, I've coached soccer for 25 years. I love grass, I want the kids playing on grass. But we're a city of 40,000 people with 4,500 4, kids in our school system and hundreds of kids trying to play youth soccer and youth lacrosse every weekend in the spring and fall. You just flat out need uh, an artificial surface to play on. There's one at the high school, now there'll be one here. Um, and if it ever needed to be driven home, have you noticed that when the flowers are, now that the flowers are coming out, they're looking pretty good? Because we got, not only did we get our April showers, but we've been getting our May showers kind of nonstop. And it's been a kind of a typical spring in that way. And our youth sports kids haven't been able to get on the fields. So at any rate, that field, the, the, the field at the bottom will be grass, the field above it will be artificial. And together, they'll be a great resource for the middle school kids to have a very kind of active, robust after school uh, intramural pro set of programs and in school uh, physical, physical education programs. Um, there's much more, but I'll leave it at that. After we're all done speaking, there won't be a Q&A in this setting, but we're all gonna, as soon as we're done, get over to our spots at the tables, and you can all have anything you wanna share with us, ask us, and say to us at that time. So, who's next? Kevin, Mike? Good morning. Uh Commissioner Mike Collins, Commissioner of Public Services and Engineering. And um, simply uh, put, what we do is we fix things. About everything in the city they can think of. Uh, we're fortunate to have a department that uh, has nine divisions. We're fortunate to have a, de oh, there we go, hey, how about that? <laughs> we're fortunate to have a department of uh, nine divisions that cover every aspect of maintenance throughout the city of Beverly. Everything from our engineering division, where you might go for permitting of projects and oversight of uh, big capital projects. We have a motor pool. We fix all the vehicles in the city. Um, we have water and traditional water and sewer, forestry and grounds, which handles all the public parks, all the trees. Uh, we have um, our highway division, which plows all the snow, takes care of the sewer system, fixes the potholes, fixes the sidewalks. Uh, we have... Um, uh, Electrical division now, we actually take care of all the city streetlights, uh, fire alarms, uh, traffic signals, um, and uh, we have a building maintenance division. We actually repair all the city buildings, including the schools. Uh, the, obviously, we have a public schools division. Uh, the maintenance of the public schools is now something that we take care of for the last six or seven years. Um, so we keep busy, and basically, any problem that anyone goes to a department in the city 
and the department doesn't have an answer, we end up with the question, and, and we end up trying to fix it for people. So we're in, like I said, we're in the fix-it business. Um, right now, as you may have noticed, we got a couple of streets dug up in, around the city. Um, it, it, it's New England, so we apologize. There's only a few months for us to work each year. Um, it's, it's somewhat of a challenge to get anything done in New England in, in, the, in our short construction season. Um, Kevin will speak a little bit more in depth about the 1A project, but that's something that I've been in the city for almost 17 years. I was in Salem for seven years before that in a similar role, and that project actually started life when I was working for the city of Salem, because the city of Salem actually has a water main on, on Rantoul Street. So uh, that project's been a long time in the works. Kevin will get into the details on that. Some of the other things, that, some of the other bigger projects that we have going on in the city is um, we've been very busy over the course of the winter, um, a lot of our time is spent trying to improve infrastructure, which will then turn into a street paving project. Street paving is something we love to do because you, you love us to do. Um, a lot of our streets need to be paved. But a lot of our effort goes into trying to prepare those roads for paving. The day we actually pave it, the day we paint it black, that's the easy day. It's the year or two or three leading up to that that is uh, all the difficult work, coordinating with the gas company to get their utilities upgraded. We have to go in and... and, and uh, replace the drainage, make sure the road drains right, because in the world of roadways, water is our enemy. Um, so we're always trying to make sure the roads can drain. And um, then we have uh, you know, sewer and water, uh, domestic water work that we usually do in conjunction with road paving. So we've, we've been busy, like for instance, this past winter, we've been working on a project to improve the water main that feeds Beverly Farms. Um, that project is almost wrapping up. If you drive out Hull Street, you'll see some the temporary uh, water mains on the side of the road, that's almost wrapping up. Um, and uh, along with that, we replaced the water main on Haskell Street, went from a six inch to a 12 inch, when, you know, from something that was put in the early part of the 1900s to a brand new 12 inch, which will serve us for the next 100 plus years. Um, and it also has the benefit of greatly increasing the amount of fire flow out in the farms. The farms happens to be the very end of our water system, so um, we need to, you know, we're, we're, we have a, these two projects which are just finishing up now which are really going to make a, a big difference in how much water we can get out to the farms. Over the last, over, over my tenure here, we have, uh, you've probably seen us digging up a lot of neighborhoods with a lot of big projects that were geared towards fixing widespread flooding. Actually, we've had a number of meetings in this very room with various neighborhood groups as we fixed flooding around Lawrence Brook, around Chase Street, Chubbs Brook, North Beverly Brook, Raymond Farms, um, you know, these are large-scale drainage projects aimed at fitting, fixing chronic flooding that took place over decades. And uh, we're happy to say um, all those projects have been very successful to date. Um, and we really, we still, you know, there's a lot of wet basements in the city right now. Mine's one of them. Um, and uh, so uh, that's, wet basements are one thing. We used to, as, as a lot of you people know, we've been here long-time residents, uh, we had widespread flooding regularly in a lot of places in the city. So we've made a lot, a huge amount of progress. Um, so we're able to turn our attention to other things like uh, trying to up, upgrade the, the, the pedestrian amenities throughout the city. If you, if you drive out on Hale Street um, from Chapman's Corner back into town, you'll see we just finally finished up that section of sidewalks there, which strangely enough, Hale Street's a major route in the city, one, Route 127 very scenic road, a lot of people travel it, a lot of bike riders, a lot of walkers, and uh, we've put a lot of effort in the last few years into upgrading streets like that, Essex Street, Hale Street, um, trying to improve the sidewalk amenities out there, trying to make it so people can get out. And it's really, uh, we're, we're very happy um, to, to watch those projects unfold and, and the neighbors come out and for the first time they're getting out and able to walk and, and uh, we've actually had some people come out after some of our projects and say, I never met my neighbors before the sidewalk was done because so, everyone's out walking now. And that's, that's really what we're trying to promote, trying to get people out, trying to make, trying to make Beverly a better place. Because uh, Beverly, as we all know, is a beautiful city. There's a lot going for it. Um, s any city in the country would be jealous of the fact that we're on the coast. We got the ocean. I mean, you can't, you can't buy that. So um, along with those improvements, we're also making it a lot better for... Uh, uh, cyclists in town um, through new bike lanes in a lot of places. Um, we have a small project going on right now. You've probably noticed um, we don't do this stuff on purpose to just make people mad, but we're digging up a little piece of Cabot Street right downtown by 
by the intersection of Winter, Knowlton, and Pond. Trying to make that, if you've driven through there, I'm sure you have, you've noticed that it's a huge area of just wasteland pavement, and it's very, very unfriendly for pedestrians. So we're in the, in the middle of a project now of trying to um, tighten up that area, make it so the cars can absolutely still get through just fine, um, trucks and fire trucks and everything. We've looked at make sure that everybody can proceed through the intersection, do anything they want. But now you can actually have a half a chance of getting across that road without having to jog. Um, and it's also going to provide much better sidewalks there. Um, you know, we've been working for decades to try to improve um, handicap accessibility of our sidewalks, and that's another area. Uh, if, you, if you look in the manual on how not to build a sidewalk for accessibility, some of the sidewalks we had right down that intersection were textbook examples of what not to do. They were difficult uh, on the best day of the week, but you add a little bit of rain or snow or ice, and they were treacherous. So when we're done, the whole area is going to be a lot better to, to walk through. Um, so like I said, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll try to wrap it up. But we, we're the department that anything you can think of that's maintenance in the city or uh, long-term improvements, that's, we have a division that takes care of it. Um, and like I said, we're usually the last stop for people who don't know where else to get an answer uh, because we end up um, usually, it's usually our problem at the end of the day in some way, shape, or form. Um, we'll be over there and, you know, we can, we can uh, help you answer specific questions about your property or your neighborhood or just anything you're curious about later on. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me okay? All right. My name's Kevin Artuni, and I'm the Chief of Staff here in the City of Beverly. And uh, thank you all for coming today. And thank you, departments, for being present as well. Um, Mayor asked me to speak a little bit about the 1A uh, road construction project. Um, it's an incredibly important infrastructure and revitalization project in our downtown. It stretches from the southern limit, which is the Beverly-Salem Bridge, down Rantoul Street, through Gloucester Crossing, up Cabot Street, and to where the new middle school is going to be located. It also includes a section of Elliott Street from Rantoul to Cabot, and a portion of Cabot Street up by the Rite Aid. Um, the work itself, uh, it, it includes drainage improvements, new streets, new sidewalks, new trees, and significantly more trees. Um, there's new ornamental lights going in, and the project incorporates a complete streets design, which allows for pedestrian, bicycle, and vehicle um, friendly elements through the corridor. Um, work commenced, well, I should back up. Mike mentioned that for some time the project's been uh, in design and implementation, before the implementation. April 11th of last year, uh, we, we had uh, the work commence formally. Prior to that, you saw a lot of uh, trench work going on, utility work, that's the prep work for the project. But the full depth reconstruction of the roadway where they dig down a number of feet and regrade and everything becomes dirt, that work commenced last year in April. Uh, the project is scheduled to last two construction seasons. So last construction season, and again, this construction season, with a firm date of completion October 31st of this year. Uh, right now, the project is on schedule and within budget. So that's great, especially on a project of the scale and size. I mentioned how important the project is. It's also incredibly um, disruptive uh, for residents, businesses, and visitors alike. Um, being in the downtown, it's, it's very difficult to do that type of work, um, but we've committed to do whatever we can, uh, the administration, Mike Collins, and, and the whole team here in the city, working with the state, whose project it ultimately is, and with the Middlesex Corporation, which is the contractor, uh, to do whatever we can to limit disruption, as well as continue to provide communication along the way, because that is an essential part of success around this project, is letting people know what to expect. So. We've done a few things over the last couple of years to try to hit those goals. Um, we formed right off the bat with the mayor's leadership a 1A committee. It's made up of city officials, elected represent representatives, business representatives, and resident representatives. And we meet monthly, if not more often, to talk about the project and give people updates. Um, it's an incredibly important opportunity for us to get everybody on the same page, understand what the project is, so there's no misinformation out there. And we've seen that to be very successful. And it also gives us some feedback of what people are seeing during the project so we can make adjustments along the way, which we have. 
Um, we also create a project-specific website where you can get information. You can contact us there. Um, you can find out more information about the project as a whole. That is www.bev1a.com. Through the website, you can sign up for Twitter notifications. So if you tweet, you can do that. <laughs> you can get sort of like a pager. When a notice goes up, an update on the schedule, a Twitter notification goes out to anybody who signed up. Also, through the website, you can sign up for news, uh, an email newsletter. So basically what that really is is a weekly update on what the construction is going to look like as we get the updates. So we post as often as we can updates on the website, and then they trickles outward to anybody who signed up with us to get information. Last three years, we've also put together in the spring business forums. Um, this work, like I said, is disruptive. And so to get, uh, get out there and communicate with the with the business owners, the people whose livelihoods depend on being open and having people get to their businesses, we wanted to make sure we told people everything they needed to know going into that. So we had three straight years of that, um, which the businesses have been really resilient. They've been great to work with, and we appreciate all of, all of the, the communication they've provided us along the way. We also have a significant amount of day-to-day -day outreach, both from the contractor on site, um, who has Chris, one of the foremen who's dedicated to going around speaking with the businesses and some of the residents to update them, on what's going, uh, update them on what's happening. And I myself, if you see me running around in a suit on Rantoul Street in a construction site, that's what I do sometimes. So um, we, we've, we spend a lot of time just trying to make sure we talk with anybody who has questions, concerns, and needs information. And then we can also do concentrated reverse 911, so sections that are affected during a finite period of time, unusual type of work we can let people know through the reverse 911 system. Um, and then project signage. One example is, is making sure detour signs are accurate, that they make sense so people can get around as best they can if there's a detour. But also business open signs. We heard that from a number of people. You know, my business, we need to let people know we're open. So we, we came up with the idea of ordering these bright blue business open signs. If you travel in that corridor, you've probably seen them. Um, and the businesses see, have, to, have given us feedback that it tends to, to be helpful. So um, that was a that was a good suggestion that the communication was helpful with. And the last thing I'll mention is we've made a concentrated effort uh, to try to promote the businesses that are affected by this work. It's our goal to do whatever we can to help them. We've worked with the Greater Chamber of Commerce, Greater Beverly Chamber of Commerce, Beverly Main Streets, and the Farmers Market to provide some incentives to businesses along this way. It's not a monetary incentive, but they, they can help promote the business during the construction through their uh, networks and through their memberships. So. We've, uh, we've got some opportunities there. So if you are a business on 1A, you are affected by this, please go to the 1A website and click the For Business button, and you can find out more information about what we're doing for businesses. Um, I'll just wrap with this. Uh, again, there's a lot of work going on in the city. Rantoul Street and Cabot Street are as busy as they come. Um, but we'll continue to do whatever we can to help um, along the way. And Please, again, Kevin Artunia, Chief of Staff, if there is an issue at all, call the mayor's office, ask for me, and I'll, as soon as I have a minute, I'll run out there to try to see if we can find a result that can uh, help anyone who's in any type of need. So with that, I'll wrap. Thank you very much again for everybody coming today. Good morning, folks. I'm Bruce Doig. I'm the uh, Director of Parks, Recreation, and Community Services. <clears throat> so Community Services, as you see, makes up several different departments, and I apologize, uh, Marianne, <laughs> got, or the library got listed twice, so it's a really important place. But um, <clears throat> anyway, you can see Parks and Recreation, the Library, Veteran Services, the Health Department, and the Council on Aging, where you're at today. Um, again, I have to say I oversee these departments, but the directors for each of these areas <clears throat> do an outstanding job, have a lot of experience helping out people in the city, providing services, and just communicating with people when needed. Um, and we also work very closely with Mike's department uh, to get uh, maintenance and things done and projects done and so forth. So uh, we cover a lot of ground, but again, you'll hear from each of these directors, but um, again, uh, they work very hard at their individual areas. So I'm going to talk about the Recreation Department first. We're the fun guys. Um, you know, you're all welcome to come down in a couple of weeks to Lynch Park and run through the splash pad when it opens again. Um, you know, it's always crowded down there with lots of kids and everybody having a great time. We rebuilt the playground a couple years ago. We put in the splash pad. We've rebuilt several playgrounds around the city. So um, the Recreation Department is overseen by the Beverly Parks and Recreation Commission. 
which is a nine-member policy-making board that's appointed by the mayor's office, and uh, they help us to set priorities, advise um, regarding projects and policies, and uh, serve as advocates for recreation in the community. The Recreation Department, we oversee over 40 recreation facilities in the city, including parks, beaches, fields, and buildings, and provide programs and activities for children of all ages. Uh, we really are kind of uh, womb to tomb. Uh, we, we do something for everybody, but our primary focus in the summer is obviously on the children. Uh, so what do we do? In the summer, we have, um, we staff 12 parks around the city from 8.30 to 12, and we have an afternoon park, uh, one location from one to four, and that program runs for eight weeks. It's a free program that um, anybody can come to. It's a drop-in program, so kids come and go. They don't sign up in advance other than an emergency contact form. Uh, we provide free lunches at five of those parks. Um, we're still working out the details for this year, but we've worked very closely with Bootstraps and the Beverly Public Schools to provide lunches for years. Bootstraps has done this for probably close to 20 years, uh, but to provide lunches for kids who may not get uh, something at home, and it's a great program. We run four summer day camps at Lynch Park uh, from three to five-year-olds all the way up to middle school kids. And again, this is a huge program for us, and we're very proud of that program. Um, we staff lifeguards, about 15 lifeguards at three beaches around the city, Dane Street, Lynch Park. Um, and we have a CIT program, counselor and training. We have over 45 volunteers every year. It's been about 45 for the last few years. And these kids volunteer uh, every week throughout the summer. And last year, they put in over 4,800 hours of volunteer work with the Recreation Department. Um, they average about 125, 126 hours per uh, year. And it's amazing that kids who are you know, 13, 14, 15 uh, are willing to volunteer that much time f throughout their summer. Uh, but it's a great program for us, and a lot of these kids grow up to become great counselors for us as well. Uh, summer sports, we run basketball, football, baseball clinics, and pretty much anything that people are willing to uh, run for us. Hit the wrong button. Um, the, uh, we have special events at Lynch Park where we bus kids from all over the city every Thursday from uh, 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock, and the kids have a great time. We run all kinds of events down there. Uh, we have the summer concert series, which I'm sure many of you have attended, and if you haven't, you know, check it out. Sunday nights at Lynch Park, there's no better place to be, especially if it's a hot day. Uh, you get a nice breeze down there on Sunday nights, and, and then we follow that up with a movie series every week uh, for families to come down and watch a movie. Uh, we also have some youth sports and obesity programs that we run, uh, a middle school program at the high school every year called PAWS for Panther Athletic Workout Zone. And again, it's amazing how many kids sign up for this program to come down three days a week and run and run and run and work hard uh, to try to stay in shape. And a lot of these kids aren't even athletes. They're just kids who want to get uh, learn how to work out and so forth. So it's a great program. We do a lot of adult and youth enrichment programs throughout the year, and you'll be able to check out our brochure in the back. It's the winter-spring version, but the new version, the summer version, will be coming out any day now or by next week. Uh, it's at the printer. It will be mailed soon. Uh, you get one of those at every house. You can get copies here and so forth. But we have something for everybody. We have arts, fitness, dance, photography, quilting, uh, umpiring classes, boating classes, fishing classes, and many, many more. So check it out. We also run several community events. Uh, Touch a Truck is coming up in a couple weekends. And uh, we also get involved with Beverly New Year's, Tiny Touch Day, Beverly Homecoming, um, which obviously includes the lip sync extravaganza if you haven't seen it, it's amazing. Uh, in terms of facilities, we have uh, parks and playgrounds. We have over 28 parks and playgrounds, including the schools. Um, we've renovated many of those this year, or last year we added the uh, pavilion at Lynch Park. Uh, which, again, will be a great place for people to hang out. We have over 32 fields, including baseball, softball, soccer, lacrosse. Uh, we're working with all youth and sport, adult sports organizations to share resources and provide safe fields. Uh, there are nine beaches in Beverly, like I said. Uh, altogether, there's over 42 open spaces in Beverly that are under our jurisdiction, so it's a lot of work. Again, Mike's guys do a tremendous job taking care of everything. Indoor facilities, we have the Carriage House, which is ongoing uh, restorations. Camp Paradise, which we acquired a couple of years ago. 
the GIR Hall. And um, just to give you an idea of the number of kids we serve every year, we hire 75 or so kids every season or summer. So that's a lot of kids that you know, can uh, make a little bit of money, have some fun during the summer. Um, but we also, over 1,000 kids register for our park program every year. Like I said, that's a free program that anybody in the city can take advantage of, age 6 to 12. Uh, the summer camps, we have about 250 kids every year. Those are unique kids because some kids sign up for multiple sessions. Uh, 200 or so in our sports camps. Um, miscellaneous programs, about 150 kids between some of the other youth programs that we offer. Uh, including babysitting, art classes, and so forth. Uh, the youth sports organizations that we work very closely with include Beverly Little League, 500 kids, girls softball, 300, Babe Ruth baseball, 200, youth soccer, about 1,100. That includes boys and girls. Uh, lacrosse, boys and girls, about 400. Pop Warner football, 300, including players and cheerleaders. And North Shore flag football, about 250 kids. So you can see we cover the full range of um, people and activities, and we're always open to, for feedback regarding improvements to facilities or activities that we, you know, we might want to try. You know, we're having ongoing conversations right now about adding a bocce court somewhere in the city for people to use. Uh, there's a group of folks here at the Senior Center that play on a regular basis. So we're lo always looking to improve things, always looking to add facilities when uh, needed. So your feedback is greatly appreciated. So I'm going to pass it on to um, is it David next. David Perrin Chief is the head of our uh, Veteran Services Organization. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, again, my name is Dave Perrin Chief. Um, I'm not going to go into crazy details with the VA because we'll all be here till next week if we do that. Um, so basically, local and state v veteran benefits, they kind of fall into the same category through state benefits. You can have obtain local benefits, also through federal benefits, you can obtain local and state benefits. So with that, um, the first thing I wanted to spell is the biggest rumor, um, which is literally causing veterans hardship, is this concept that by filing a VA claim or coming in for benefits, you're in turn hurting another veteran. That's not how it works. The more veterans that come in, the more funding the VA gets. So if you've been living or have friends or family that have been living with this rumor that if they file a claim, they're going to take money from another guy. That is not true, and that, is, that has been the ongoing fight that the VA has been having to get that rumor dispelled because it is causing problems in the veteran community. Um, in terms of state benefits, uh, the state of Massachusetts has a program called Chapter 115. Um, it is an income-driven program, um, but again, it is something if you don't know about it or if you have questions, just come and ask. Um, the widows of veterans are also, or the widower of these programs is also eligible for these benefits if they qualify. So even after the veteran passes away, uh, the next of kin can still come in and get help if they need it. This is a state program. Your tax dollars have already paid into it. So again, you are not taking anything from anybody. It's, the money has been allocated by the state. Um, the, uh, most recently, the veteran Council has just been reestablished. Uh, there was a veteran council in the city, but it was an uh, inactive council. So a new council has been reestablished. Uh, it is open to the public. It is open to anybody who wishes to come and sit in on any of our meetings. Um, most of the veteran post commanders or members are part of this committee. So there is a representative from basically each section of Beverly or within each element of the veteran community from Beverly as part of this council along with uh, some civilians because we wanted to bring in a separate point of view or a point of view from somebody who, you know, sees the veterans from the other side. Um, so for events, obviously, we have Memorial Day coming up. Um, we are shifting the time this year to 2 o'clock. Usually we start at 1. This is to give people more time from the other communities to get over to Beverly since a lot of other towns want to march in our parade or be part of our parade. Um, so just remember, 2 o'clock is going to be the large parade start time this year. The Beverly Farms Parade will go as normal. And other than that, um, Veterans Day, obviously, in November. We haven't really started doing much of the work up for that because it is uh, further out. And really, um, like I said, I'm going to keep this short because everybody's been talking. We do have a timeline. But um, any further questions, you know, please. Come to the back. I'll be here for a bit. Um, and yeah, 
that's uh, pretty much all I got for now. Hopefully you can see me because I'm probably the shortest one here. But um, uh, good morning. My name is Anna Langstaff, and I'm the new director at the Beverly Public Library. Uh, it's nice to see some familiar faces here. Um, the Beverly Public Library is more than just a collection of books. So I'm excited to be here this morning to give you a snapshot of some of the programs and services that we offer at the library. Our Monday morning lecture series is a weekly uh, lecture series that runs September through May, every week. Um, this coming Monday, May 15th, we're going to have John Cole. We call him, or he calls himself, actually, the House Whisperer. And he's going to talk about dating um, homes in Essex County, and particularly in Beverly. We're thinking about summer reading. Our big kickoff event is Wednesday, June 21st at the Main Library. We expect anywhere between 600 and 800 children, parents, and grandparents to show up that night at the library. That's the night when they all sign up or can sign up for summer reading. Uh, they'll learn how to earn their, top, their free Topsfield Fair tickets. And we also um, will have some free delicious ice cream for them. Uh, we've got a lot of great summer uh, programs planned. Um, Wing Masters, and that's uh, North American Birds of Prey. Henna Tattoos, that's really popular with the teens. Arts and Crafts, Music, Library Lawn Party. Um, just come to our website and you'll see all the great things that we're planning this summer. We also have summer concerts out on the patio um, at the main library. Wednesday nights, July and August at 6 o'clock. It's just a, a wonderful way to spend a, a great summer evening. And despite what Bruce says, I think we're called the fun place too. So <laughs> it's not just the rec department. Um, switching gears a little bit, we uh, offer technology classes in May and June. Lisa Ryan, who's our head of reference, who's here this morning, will be offering a series of classes our online learning classes. Do you want to learn a foreign language? Do you want to learn how to repair your um, lawnmower? Do you want to buy a washing machine, but you don't know which one? We have lots of online services that will help you with that, and Lisa will be glad to, to share that with you uh, this morning. Um, other services, reading recommendations. You just read a great book, but you can't think of another great book to read, and you're desperate. We provide personalized reading recommendations for children, teens, and adults. You tell us what you like to read, what you're interested in, and we'll develop a personalized reading a list just for you. Bookmobile. A lot of you have probably seen the bookmobile around town. Siobhan, our bookmobile librarian, goes to schools, neighborhoods, playgrounds in the summer. Um, nursing homes, daycare centers. So, you know, wave at Siobhan as she, as she goes by. She provides a wonderful, wonderful service for the people of Beverly. Museum passes. I don't want to forget about museum passes. The library provides for free uh, reduced um, and some free museum passes for many of the local North Shore museums and even some Boston museums. And all you need is a library card. And how do you get these passes? We just reserve them over the phone, in person, or online. You ask me at the, at the table over there, and I can give you all the particulars. And last but not least, uh, the library, both the, the main branch and uh, the farm branch library, have wireless. Just bring your laptop in, no charge. You connect automatically. We also have free PCs. Sit down if you don't have a computer at home or you, your computer's broken or your printer's broken. Come down and see us and we can help you out. So I hope that all of you will come visit us, whether it's at the main library, the farms branch, or on the bookmobile. And I look forward to seeing many of you at the library. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Teresa Kirsch, the public health nurse for Beverly. And I'm here today on behalf of Bill Burke, our director, who's away this week. 
Um, the health department has a diverse, um, diverse responsibilities. Um, the first of which was we um, enforce numerous state regulations. We inspect rental housing units, food establishments, the bathing beaches from June until August. Uh, we inspect semi-public swimming pools, tanning facilities, recreational camps for children, Bruce, <laughs> um, septic systems, and uh, communicable disease investigation. That also includes any animal bites to humans that are reported to us. In addition, we have um, local regulations and ordinances that we enforce. Um, those are body art, piercing and tattooing, a change of occupancy in rental housing units, uh, keeping of animals, so if you want chickens or the people you want to see, um, the sale of tobacco products, and also environmental tobacco smoke. In addition to all the things that we have to do, we have a lot of things, that, uh, other um, responsibilities and services we provide to the residents of Beverly. Uh, we operate a school-based dental clinic. We hold an annual hazardous waste collection day um, every spring. We have a mercury recovery program. Uh, we take old hearing um, aid batteries, uh, light bulbs, thermostats, anything with mercury in them, or if you think that they might have mercury. Um, in the fall, we have our flu clinics that are open to the public. Uh, and in conjunction with the police department, uh, we do the medication disposal collection, uh, which is usually twice a year. And otherwise, during that time, you can go to the police department or um, the hospital, and they have both medication and sharps disposal kiosks there. Uh, we also are involved in mosquito control. And um, in addition to all that, every year something new comes up. Last year was Zika. Years past, it was Ebola. We keep up to date with all of that. If you have any questions, you can always contact us or look at our website. Um, we work with other communities on the North Shore for emergency preparedness. Um, we do a lot, of, a lot of varying things. So if you think there's something we can help you with, please call us. If we're not the department, we will find you the right person to talk to. Uh, thank you. And we have, a, we have people over there. We have our um, two inspectors at our table if you have any questions. And I'll be there myself. Thank you. Well, hello again. I'm Mary Ann Holak, and I'm the director of the Senior Center right here at um, this facility. And I just have a question before I go on. Does anyone have a birthday today? How about this week? Oh, no one's volu Oh, somebody has one this week. Happy birthday. Um, the point I want to make is that we're all growing older. And so when we're seniors in high school, we're excited to go off into the world. We have the whole world ahead of us. But when someone starts to call us a senior citizen, most of us do not like that. Um, as a matter of fact, so many people will tell me I'm too young to come to the senior center. And so my best response has been, well, don't wait until you're too old. Because we also have a lot of fun here. Um, and of course, I was a camp counselor in my early career, Bruce, and I actually went and got my master's degree in recreation administration because I thought I'd be a camp counselor forever. And I think, actually, this is kind of like that. We have so much fun at the Senior Center. But a lot of people ask, who is the Council on Aging? And the Council on Aging is a nine-member advisory board appointed by the mayor. And the advisory board advises on what the needs are in the community for the seniors, what they're hearing are the interests of the seniors. And so that's our, the Council on Aging is our advisory board. And coming very soon is a needs assessment of the whole community asking you what you think the seniors of our community need. And um, so the Senior Center, the building we're in today, is really our hub of activities and services that we provide to seniors. Of course, we want to be a senior-friendly community. And um, a new term that's been coined is a dementia-friendly community. Because probably most of you know um, the numbers of older people keep growing. And that means more people who are struggling with some memory issues. And so we really want to be friendly in our community to all the older people who have health challenges and other challenges. Um, so our mission is to proactively anticipate and respond to the evolving needs of seniors. We provide social services, education, health, recreation, transportation, cultural arts, and other programs which enhance the well-being of older adults in the Beverly community. 
Our ultimate goal is to support each individual's choices and desires to continue as an independent contributing member of the Beverly community. We gave you little notepads today that say age out loud on them. So I encourage you all to age out loud. Some of um, the social services that we provide are outreach services. So we actually have workers in our building who will help you apply for fuel assistance, for um, food stamps, for the circuit breaker tax credit, for trash fee waivers, property tax abatements, senior housing, we have a list of all the different options available to you. We also have SHINE counselors and they help you with your Medicare questions and they also help you if you're just turning 65 to apply for Medicare. Um, we offer referral services and we connect a lot of people to Senior Care, which is our partner, providing um, home care services, protective services, and other services to older people in our community. Um, we have area attorneys who donate their time to do a free legal clinic every month. And we have support groups. We have a support group for grandparents, for older battered women, for Parkinson's disease patients, um, and uh, for caregivers. And we really try in our outreach department to reach out to the most vulnerable people among us. And I keep saying I'm, I'm most worried about those 90 to 100 year olds. Some of them are just wonderful examples of aging well, but others really need a lot of help to get by. And many of them isolate themselves in their homes. And so if you happen to have a neighbor who is um, in that category, we'd love you to just tell us. We have a neighbor who might need someone to check in on them once in a while. Uh, every day we offer lunch here um, with a partnership with Senior Care as well um, for a $2 donation, a full hot meal. Um, and we also send out about 300 Meals on Wheels every day um, to people who are indeed homebound. Uh, we have lots of volunteers, almost 200. And a few years ago we started a partnership with Merrimack College to um, have a community engagement fellow on site. And so we've been able to do some really wonderful programs. We have a breakfast club that we have with Beverly High School seniors and seniors from the Senior Center. They have breakfast together every month. And they talk about you know, yesterday and today and all the things they have in common in spite of all the differences in age. Um, we also have a game night twice a month where Gordon College, Endicott College, Montserrat College send students over to play board games with our seniors. So we have an awful lot of fun. Um, and I would say what's hot right now is exercise. Every day of the week, we have yoga, Pilates, aerobics, uh, our exercise for people with arthritis, um, Zumba. I cannot believe the people who take Zumba. I'm just so proud of, and impressed with them. Um, and then last but not least, we also offer transportation. And you probably have seen some of our buses around town. So if you don't have a car and you need to get to a doctor's appointment or a hairdresser, or you want to come to the senior center for an event or for lunch, you can make an appointment with our transportation service and we'll pick you up at your front door. Can you do the next slide? And just an example of what's happening, um, not only in Beverly, but every place. The last year, for the first time, there are more people over 60 years old living in Beverly than there are children under 18 years old in Beverly, by about 1,200. So we're seeing it um, in two different places. We're seeing it in the parking lot is always full these days. Uh, but we're seeing it with the age range of people who are using our services. It looks like it's the, the 75 to 85 year olds who are really enjoying us. Actually, maybe 70 to 85 year olds. But we have a good chunk of people in their 60s and also a chunk of people from 90 to 100 who are coming in and using our services. Um, in the past year, we've had um, 24, almost 2,500 individuals participating in our programs and activities. We have 187 volunteers. We've helped uh, 1,142 people in our outreach. And in transportation, we've served 177 people. So these are some of the things that we do here at the Senior Center. And we also have a table here today and we'd be happy to talk to you. Um, and I know the mayor wants to say a few words, but I also want to say, don't you think we have a great community? I mean, these, the, the, the programs and th services we have available are just really wonderful. Thank you, Mayor Cahill. Thanks, Marianne. So just a couple thoughts to, to wrap. Um, first, what, what Marianne just said about reaching out for help, I mean, there are a lot of great programs. There's a lot of, a lot of positive and fun and enjoyment here. Uh, but 
for all of us and for anybody who may watch this on BevCam as well, uh, whether you have needs that you may, may need to reach out for, whether you're family members, friends, neighbors, whether they're seniors or kids, don't ever hesitate to reach out for help. Uh, you can reach out you know, during the day, during business hours to anyone here. You can reach out directly to our police department anytime, night or day. We, want, we don't want anybody to, um, to hurt for not reaching out. And if you, as I said, if you see anybody who you think needs help, don't ever hesitate. Um, I do want to also just, um, just point up all the music offerings that come with the season. Now that we're in the outdoor season of the year, um, you heard mention of concerts. We, once we get into summer, there will be a concert most every Wednesday night at the library at 6 p.m., Thursday nights on the Beverly Common at the bandstand at 6 p.m., and Sunday nights down at, at, um, at Lynch Park at 6 p.m. So 6 p.m. is the magic hour. Concerts typically go about two hours, and you can count on one every Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday night. I believe also we'll be uh, programming uh, the newly rebuilt Ellis Square downtown with some music and other types of programming on Friday night. So just keep that in mind. Um, and last point, everything you're hearing and pretty much everything we do is all about uh, services and programs. And that's what a local government does, uh, trying to take our tax dollars and make sure that they go towards, um, towards making Beverly a better place, a safer place, a more enjoyable place to live and, and to make our lives. So thanks for being here with us this morning. Uh, we'll, we'll all be here at these, at these tables to visit with you and answer any questions for the next 45 minutes or so. Thank you all.